a fast route between two towns, but the oil which promised to make each town rich was never there. The track died fast. The citizens, like the bird, survive on pickings. The vulture gouges at a cow's jawbone, a piece of paper trapped under the skull. Your motion disturbs the bird, takes off with an air of disdain. The buffalo is long dead. There was no meat left. It lands again, not far across the track. The note tears as you pull it free. I can't wait longer. Ran out of food. Mary, I can't wait longer. Ran out of food, so had to hunt. I hate it. I said we'd leave for a new life, but not one like this. Guess you changed your mind. If you still want to marry me, I'm going north. I love you. The rider did not make it far. Some 200 yards across the track is a body on its back. It stinks. The clothes at the front are bloody and torn where they've been pecked by birds. There's no obvious wound that hasn't been inflicted after death. When you roll it over with your foot, the killing blow is obvious. A shotgun blast to the back at short range. There's a wallet on the ground where the alley joins the street stuffed with bills. You pick it up and glance around. They're on the ground just behind him. You snag him before he crushes them with an errant knee. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. He's, his face lights up. Ah, oh, thank you. Your seat is plush and comfortable. The crowd chats excitably around you. The first few scenes play out fairly predictably. Abruptly, the scene shifts from the dancing and grand ceremony to a shot of a grubby alley. Takes you a second to realize 
you're looking at yourself. The audience cheers as you hand over the wallet. The applause spreads like a brush fire. When was the last time you ever prayed? For me, it feels like a lifetime. My hands, I, I never thought I'd see my hands so warm, soft, and yellow from the calluses. There's a steam like fiery needles like surging through my fingers. When my hands meet, the pain grows hotter and leaner and my arm muscles contract as if they wish to rip through the skin. And yet, when these hands are picking fruit from the ground, the pain cruelly leaves. Un dolor y bien desentados. A dollar twenty y the absence of a prayer. I never thought I'd see myself like this. Now, tell me a funny story. Make me laugh. Hmm, do not trick yourself, friend. Joy, mi hijo, my son, or at least my memory of him, keeps me going. I forget how long it's been. I wonder sometimes at what age does one start forgetting and stop forgiving. I hope when I see him again, he will understand. I hope. Do you know anything funny? Anything I can write home about to mi hijo? Oh, if Nico were here, I would tell him that one. I would like to see his little face laugh. Home, Ecuador. I remember it so clearly. The people and their homes were built from the same mold. Vibrant but rough in the inside. Mi padre said it just reminded him of me before. And for once in his life, he was right. Please share a story of hope with me. What a wonderful story. We need stories like this to give us strength, the future. There's a stir amongst the workers going on for years now. Whatever it is, I don't know if it'll work. And if it doesn't, well, just another day for picking grapes. Maybe you have a good hopeful story to tell? What a good story. I will remember it for a while. I know. Travel. I was talking to a couple, both Mexican, who by day go work in the orange fields and then by night travel back home. Oh, if only was so easy for me. I could have gone back home as soon as the first day ended, but I didn't have it in me. The routine took me over. Please share a story of hope with me.
What a good story! I will remember it for a while. I know. It is through my faith in Him that I'm still here. Though there are times where I wonder if He sees us. Well, here is the sun. I must get ready to walk again. I'm going this way. New fields, new work. Besides, you must be tired of listening to me. I'm already talking like una anciana, an old woman at the edge of her deathbed. What about you? How do you make sense of your life? Buen día le de Dios, stranger. Come, sit with me a little. To rest is a simple remedy, pero es importante. And the first step in la curación. Everyone needs healing. It has always been this way. Sometimes it's a toothache and sometimes more. Resting the mind is difficult. Walking or sitting, running or sleeping. Always the mind is working, pensando. Do you have any frightening stories? Have you seen the work of Las Brujas on your travels? Mira mis manos. Shaking. A memory of my past. Mi mamá cried when I went to la curandera de mi pueblo to learn las curaciones. She did not want me to be like la curandera. Try to keep me from going. Pero mi papá did not let her. He knew it was good that I wanted to learn las curaciones. But now... Do you have a story about hope, about happiness, and the goodness in the world? What a good story, Esperanza. It is the most important, I think. <sighs> Joy. My favorite time of year is late summer. In August, that's the time to gather the plants for las curaciones. To be one with la tierra. To honor it. There is great joy in being alone on the llano. Or when I go to the mountains. Oh, please, tell me stories sobre la esperanza and all the good in this world. No, 
Dios lo sé. Faith, yes. Everyone believes in something different, even un poco diferente than everyone else. It is the way of the mind. I must trust a person. Faith leads them to be honorable. Hmm. But tell me, what is the most frightening thing you have seen on your travels? What a good story. Like what mi hermano used to tell me as a girl. <laughs> la fortuna de la vida. They come in good and bad. Life is hard. Sí, pero it is good too. When las brujas play with the fate of others, I do what I can to set it right. Do you have any frightening stories? Have you seen the work of Las Brujas on your travels? What a good story! Like what mi hermano used to tell me as a girl. <laughs> Libertad? It's only good if you are free to do what is right. If all there are is bad choices, there is no libertad. Pero sometimes it is hard to see what is bueno or malo. See? <sighs> You're kind to listen to una vieja talk of nada. I have learned mucho en mi vida. Now, I wish to share more than ever. Perhaps. You want to hear this old woman talk again? I hope so. The road takes me this way. If your journey takes you there, look for me. hypnotic. She belonged to someone who wronged me. Butch slipped out of this world before I could square things between us, but damn did he love this horse. He flicks the lasso, roping her neatly with his first throw. You keep her from throwing him off, and through your combined efforts, she starts to settle down.
slowly he turns. His eyes don't quite make it to yours. His whole body keels back over the wooden railing where he perched and down into the dusty road outside the saloon. Now you see the gunshot and the trail of fresh blood that leads back inside. Kneeling by his side, you offer platitudes you know are no good. His hand takes yours, and into your palm he presses two silver coins. You carefully lay the coins over both closed eyes, trying as respectfully as you can manage to fasten them in position. The strains of ragtime rise from an almost tuned piano. At the bar, an older woman, dark-haired and striking, toys with her cigarette holder. Hope you don't need lodging, the bartender tells you as you sit. The hotel's haunted. The bartender leans in. This was a long time ago. Woman lived on the fifth floor. Real fancy lady. They say she was... He breaks off, glances over at the smoking woman. I shouldn't say in mixed company. The lady laughs. Oh, go on. Her smile is sharp. Well, she had a lot of boyfriends. The bartender hedges. One of them was real jealous. He murdered her in a jealous rage and her ghost still haunts that room. There's a maid who saw the ghost with her own eyes. Beside this lonely campfire, a familiar, magnificent black horse rears at your presence. A familiar old Stetson-hatted cowboy calms him. Easy, boy, Bill says. He turns his attention to you. Sorry, he startles around strangers. I guess he's like me. You want to give him an apple? The horse snorts as you approach. Easy, easy. Bill says again, his voice low and soothing. The horse eyes you warily, but lowers its head to your palm and begins to eat. 
The cowboy nods as he lifts a tin pot from the flames. You want a cup of coffee, stranger? Don't get company much, but I try to be hospitable. West's changed. Folks still need each other. A rattlesnake unwinds from his neck and slithers down his arm. Oh, don't worry, he won't bite. There's no animal I can't tame. <laughs> People, though. He trails off, stares into the fire. An excitable man in dirty suspenders waves you over to a cave mouth. Partner, do me a favor, friend. Can you, um, inspect that cave there? Got two bits with your name on them. The cave interior is nice and cool. There's a whole bear hide, treated and tan, lying on the ground. It'll be a good spot to rest for a time, if not for the human skeleton. Back of the skull has a hole about the size of a quarter. You find a slip of journal paper inside the mouth. Normal bones, which Floyd the respectable prospector ain't touched nor seen much, merely stumbled upon during honest business. The man jumps out of his suspenders when he notices your return. Friend! <laughs> Gave me an awful scare. Making me think you got lost in there. Hey, you see those bones? How do you think that fella croaked? The man cups your hands and screams in rapture. My sly friend, you didn't tell me you're a detective. I'd have never deduced that in a million years. Lord in heaven, I'm blessed. Blessed! After he pulls back, you feel something inside your hands. Oh, it's a shiny silver coin. Pues voy a black thing, waxed so that it mirrors the stars in the sky overhead. The desert dust doesn't seem to stick to it. You find the driver, alone, retrieving something from the trunk. Well, what's it look like I'm doing? He asks, as though it's obvious. He doesn't sound like the Okies driving on the road west. He has the cold tones of an educated New Englander. The pointed feet of a tripod dig into the coarse sand, hoisting his telescope heavenward. Not the stars, friend. His tone is outwardly irritated, but unable to mask his glee at correcting your misapprehension. Looking for a planet. There's a ninth one, orbiting far beyond Neptune. Nothing yet. But we all know it's out there, waiting for someone to prove it exists. Once you can prove something exists, you get to name it. Can you imagine naming a thing that every generation hence for all time will remember you for? He didn't think the musician would even notice you. He winks. Now watch this. I'm mighty obliged. Pues 
yo no tengo a mí. Frío y falta, estos son los que me enterrarán.